Hello everyone. Welcome to Switchcraft, the Fingerboard Podcast. My name is Jana, and this time I'm sitting here with a very special guy. Uh, this time I'm sitting here with my sponsor. So everyone say hello to Bert from Five Luck. Hi everybody. I just waved. <laughs> 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 yeah. To everyone who doesn't know, Bert makes decks and his company is called Five Luck. Uh, Bert has been around uh, quite a while and yeah, I discovered Five Luck a couple years ago, I think around four years ago. Yeah, I think when so. When he sent a couple, uh, a couple to the Azi Berlin shop. I think it was still the Black River shop back then. It was. Yeah. But yeah. For, yeah, it, it was could right, be. Uh, right before it changed. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. And yeah, I basically fell in love with his boards ever since and yeah, wanted to make this happen for a while now and we finally seem to make it work in the third attempt, hopefully. Yeah, we have uh, third third time's the charm. We'll uh, we'll get it right this time. <laughs> yes. And I mean there's uh, only one other person where I had to record a second interview with which was TKY. Oh, really? And it's quite yeah. And it's quite fitting that you're the other one. Since, <laughs> yeah, you both uh, go quite well together. <laughs> and yeah, but let's uh, before we jump in into that story. Yeah. Uh, let's uh, first start uh, with you. Sure. So, when did you discover fingerboarding? How did you get into it? Oh, that was all. That was all from skateboarding when I was a kid. Um, I probably started skateboarding. In the eighth grade, I don't know if that was ninety one or or what. I can't remember. But uh, once you once you really start skateboarding, then you then you you can't stop thinking about anything but skateboarding. And so when you're in yes. school, you know you got your little pink erasers, and you'd be, oh look, my my fingers look like feet on this thing. I'm, ooh, I I can almost ollie like this. Yeah. So that's that's what started it. Just an eraser, and, and then imagination, right? start cutting pieces of paper and gluing them together and making, you know, uh, paper plies. I see people are still doing that today. Uh, of course, they're trying to sell them, but whatever. Um, <laughs> wood shop, you know, then you'd, you'd get into there and you could, you could have access to wood scraps. So you'd carve out deck shapes. There wasn't really big noses back then on boards, like turned up noses, but you could carve a tail into something. It wasn't, separate plies of wood but it'd be a just mm -hmm. cut or cut it out with a chisel and a and a whatever else you could find and and that was that so uh, a long time ago and it's all because of skateboarding I, I absolutely love skateboarding to this day it's still probably the best thing that the planet's ever experienced skateboarding and and when did you discover let's uh, let's call them industrial made uh fingerboards oh well there was always some manner of plastic stuff uh, way back in the day there was thing you you couldn't they had wheels on them but they just shatter you know if you try to trick you break the wheels mm -hmm. um and there were some more professional types but uh the real uh, the real industrial uh trying to think of the right word um what i'm trying to get at is tech deck I mean, Tech Deck came out in yeah. 97, 98, something like that. Maybe 99, but I think it was 97, 98. Yeah, I, I think 98. Yeah. Um, this came up on the podcast quite a few times, so... Yeah, I bet. I'm quite sure it's 98. It's it's funny. There's there's so many many of us that have that one thing in common, right? The Tech Deck. Mm -hmm. um, at that point, I'd already made boards and been, you know been skating now for six seven years and uh fingerboard decks got better too i'd made some some early types of more nicer looking boards you know um but i owned a i owned a skateboard shop at that time when when the tech deck came out and every week we'd get a uh a list of stuff to order from there was almost the internet was still so new there was no online ordering online catalogs mm. uh, i'd get a fax every week and I'd have to look at this fax, try to read the names of all the different new boards that are coming out, trying to order stock for my shop. 
and I saw this thing called a tech deck and I phoned up my supplier and I was like, dude, what, what's a tech deck? And he said, it's like a fingerboard with little trucks and stuff. I said, give them, I'll take them all. Thanks. Send them. And that was it. I had some of the, the first tech decks ever, ever available in Western Canada. I sold them. I mean, that that's like quite a long time ago. And I think you're a bit ahead of the curve uh, of most people listening. Well, yeah, I, I predate <laughs> most. Uh, <laughs> definitely, definitely not a, a young buck. I, I gave my body to skateboarding 20 years ago. <laughs> And uh, so when did you uh, make the jump from tech decks to uh, wooden boards? Well, wooden boards were, were, were always, always your own boards, you know, but it really wasn't... Uh, I'm probably thinking the first Bondo molds that I would have made probably 2011. Mm -hmm. maybe something like that and uh worked with that for quite a while and then uh you know just five or six years ago really decided oh, i want to do this again i need i need i need some therapy so i'm gonna make boards again and uh that was that and then i i you know sort of improved the the molds and whatnot and then really started making some boards And in 2011, when you made the first Bondo molds, uh, did you already or had you already seen other people doing fingerboards out of wood? Or no, not, not uh, did really, you know no. about trucks and everything? I had no clue. I didn't have a clue until, hmm, that's going to be like 2014 before I even knew that there was a, a scene around the world, right? I had no internet Crazy. for so many years and still to, to this day I'm living out here in the bush and like internet comes and goes like birds. It's just, you know, sometimes you got it, sometimes you don't. So yeah, no, that I, might I, be one of the reasons why it is the third attempt. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's definitely, <laughs> uh, I'm hard to find and I'm hard to, uh, I'm hard to communicate with over the uh, interweb. <laughs> But, uh, I was so stoked to see that there were others like me. I was like, holy, look, what the hell is a Berlin wood? Oh my God, look at this thing. <laughs> what's, a, what's, a, what's a G12? Oh, flat face, cool. Yeah, right. it's really funny to me that, uh, that you started so long ago, but basically skipped all the... Uh, all the progression from 26 millimeter to 29 millimeter with the first black river trucks then from 29 millimeter to 32 you basically <laughs> fast forwarded from not even having tech decks to having uh, to a time where people had black river trucks in the second generation when i saw that there were bearings and wheels i lost my mind <laughs> Like this, there's no way that's, that's real. Oh, it's, it was, just, it was just the coolest thing. It's like, I, I finally, I finally got to the future, you know, and I saw what's going on. Yeah, it was, it yeah, was awesome. I, I had a similar fast forward thing. Like when, when we spoke earlier about the, the time when tech deck, uh, became a thing mm -hmm. i took a look at uh, at a book i have uh, from martin winkler it's only in german sadly and it basically is a mix between the fingerboard history and trick tips uh -huh. and just uh, and i flicked through it and saw a uh, saw a picture of a wheel that i used to have uh, oh, wow uh, called uh, called Eur eurold they were Uh, they were just a metal core with uh, like rubber around it. Oh, sick! And yeah, and that was the same time when I think uh, that was maybe like a year after the first Winkler wheels, or maybe two years. It might have been a good couple of years, but so, um, around the time, and they they hadn't didn't have bearings. Like they were just a oh, yeah, metal like core that would ride on your truck. How did they work? How did he like that? Just a metal core, no bearing. 
it was what we had. Like I had one set of uh, Winkler wheels I and guess, two yeah. sets of them and would love them both equally. Right, right. And the only thing with with those wheels was that the rubber would come off Peel sometimes off, off the yeah. core uh, and you had to super glue it back on the core. And when I, uh, when I came back to fingerboarding in uh, uh, early 2016, yeah. I uh, came to the shop and brought one of my deck, uh, one of my Berlin woods with uh, tw- uh, 26 millimeter tech deck trucks. Yeah. A, tw- a 26 millimeter uh, Berlin wood with uh, Castle Ost logo on top, on bottom. Oh. And Eurold wheels. And one of the Eurold wheels was disintegrating. <laughs> and uh, I came to the shop and was like, hey, uh, I think I need new wheels. Can you help me? And Timo was like, what the hell do you have here? I haven't seen one of those in like 10, 15 years. Oh, yeah. He'd probably been like, let me see that. I want those. <laughs> yeah. He, he was like, hey, can I can I take a picture? <laughs> oh, yeah. Right on. <laughs> yeah. That's, a, that's, yeah so- a, that's an interesting concept. And it's one that, uh, honestly, I had no idea that someone had done that before uh, with just the core. Yeah, um, and I'm, I mean it. It did work. Like, oh, for sure. I mean, we back then we had so, like, most people still rode tech deck wheels, mm-hmm. and uh, having Winkler wheels was like the big thing. And usually, people had one set of Winkler wheels because it wasn't that Winkler wheels were only expensive. It was also that you couldn't get them easily. Like, you couldn't buy them over the internet. Yeah. You basically had to find Martin Winkler at an event, yeah. and he just wouldn't sell you multiple. Like he, uh, back then, he actually had to uh, put them on your setup himself. Would he? Uh, he need to. Yeah. Yeah, because uh, the trucks uh, had axle pins, oh, so yeah, they okay. were like small pins that yeah. didn't have a through axle, and he would pull them out. Had like his his things and then uh, put them back super glue them in and then you could basically screw on the wheel and everything oh, awesome. and he would would always do that for you and yeah that that was the way back then yeah oh i understand that that's that's pretty cool but yeah uh didn't want to derail this too much which that's i okay. already have so yeah let's try to uh, get this conversation back to you sure. oh, um all right <laughs> so, I, like to, I like talking about the past the history is so important yeah, yeah like I, I really want to do something that helps document the history of fingerboarding uh, for everyone yeah let's see if I can make that happen in the future yeah but yes yeah. um uh, so you started uh, making your uh, bundle molds and molds and then discovered that there was actually in a scene in like 2014-ish. Yeah, um, and, I, and I never I never had the nerve to to really come out and, and say hello until like 2015. But it was just fascinating. It was so good to see. So um, at what point uh, did Five Luck become a thing? Like when did you really? I uh, gotcha. When did you really create a, create the brand or the that you wanted to do it and gave a name to it and everything? Yeah. So when was that? That would have been. Uh, that would have been the first uh, actual stock of five lock decks was April first, twenty fifteen, twenty sixteen. This year, this year's five years of five so 26 yeah so I, I made decks for quite a while beforehand and made pretty sure although even even my first ones that i sold i had i had a few mistakes on but for the most part they were they were fairly good right off the, the hop and uh i i like to think they just keep keep evolving and keep getting uh better and better i mean I I can't say too much about evolving since pretty much every five I ever had was perfect. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you, you did 
change shapes, get new molds and new graphics and new oh, yeah. ways to put graphics on. And yeah, so it's not like you're not involved, evolving. Just to me, Five Likes has, have, have always been amazing. Well, <laughs> That's you. why I wanted to be on the team. <laughs> 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 but it, that that that's a that's a that's a good thing to say. I know um we've been watching you. Oh wow. Right outside my window is a lynx. A, like a big oh. cat. <laughs> oh, you are beautiful, my friend. Oh, I wish my phone wasn't all tied up. I could take a picture. Crazy. Got... I mean, that, that's what happens when you live in the in the bush in Canada. <laughs> oh, wow. I, I'm awestruck. I, I, I'm so lucky. I mean, it's a, it's a place. I live in a place where if you fuck up the wrong way, you're dead. And there's all kinds of wrong ways to do that. But when you're alive and you can see what's going on, like this, this big cat, you don't see these photographers wait for hours to get a glimpse of things like this. Oh, Unbelievable. Sorry, Yana, that just derailed us like crazy. But <laughs> no worries. I, I, I miss a lot of stuff during the during the daytime too because I work on boards like all day, that, from morning till till night. Um, so I'm this is this is a great omen for me. So anyway, there we yeah. go. Big cats, right on. <laughs> when people ask me about quality of boards and what boards I like and what brands I like. I always tell people that pretty much every company can do one good board because you usually get used to like a new shape and a new mold, new yep. way someone made the deck. And for me, it's always when I get the second deck, that's the decider if I really like that company or don't. Absolutely. And when I got the second deck from you, it was basically the first one just with a different graphic and hey, newer <laughs> right on that's that's one of the hugest compliments i could ever get because it's it's not an easy thing if you don't have a lot of fancy machines and stuff it's not the easiest thing mm -hmm. to maintain consistency in a board and that's that's so important to me like even i i don't care what's on the bottom of the board I don't care what the graphic is, what what's going on under there, but that's what everybody else likes, right? But I'm about mm -hmm. I'm about the rest of it. That's why I always, almost always, the pictures I show on Instagram or or things like that, it's not at the bottom. It's not at the graphic. I'm not I'm not forcing you into looking. Look at this graphic. Make you want to buy it. I want you to see the work that's gone into this bloody thing. And so I show mm -hmm. you the top, I show you the top ply, <laughs> not the bottom. But it's, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm the same way. If I, if I, if I get a board from somebody uh, like it, it's all right. Get, a, get one in the same shape and size. If it isn't the same, I know right away, like within yeah. seconds of, of seeing yeah, the same. tail, you know, like, Oh, like I, I don't know how many Berlin woods I have, but I could probably tell every single one apart. Like, if you blindfold me and oh, yeah. uh, tell me, hey, uh, these are Berlin woods, uh, which are uh, which of these are the, the same mold, same dimensions, everything? Yeah, I would probably still tell you, hey, uh, this one is the one where the uh, trucks aren't aligned hundred percent. This is the one oh, with yeah. with the perfect pop. Because I I have one. One Berlin wood that is perfect, and a couple ones that I have. Let's say it like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but and, and it's, I don't know. It's uh, to me, it's all about what you put into it. Mm -hmm. This this like today, like I've been doing this deck of the day thing, and it's not just to to try and sell boards. It's just I want to challenge myself this year in, in particular just to make something cool almost every day of the week. Was and like, and I I love that idea. Like when when I saw you do this, I at first I was uh, I thought it was uh, 
a thing you did for the drop uh, leading up to uh, to January first. Oh yeah, yeah. Or because because I thought yeah, that's probably like images of uh, like those are probably decks that are part of the stock that uh, yeah <laughs> work as a teaser, and then you just yeah. continued and continued, and I was like, is he going to do that? Every single day. <laughs> I am gonna try. I'm, I'm gonna have yeah. some trouble. I'm gonna have some troubles this year because I'm gonna be having to spend some time uh, in other places. I'm afraid, but mm, um, yeah. The the goal is, and and it, I haven't been planning this. I was I was just thinking it was New Year's Eve. Of course, I'm out in the bush alone, just me and the cats. Yeah. And I'm thinking, what what do I gotta? What's what's next? What do I want to do next? And mm. It's become so congested with people just doing the same stuff now. The stocks and stocks and stocks and everybody's doing the same thing. And it's it's getting a little old. So I kind of, I, I, I always consider myself more a deck maker, not a company. So I figure, you know what? Why don't I practice what I preach and make decks? Just make decks. Every day, here's a cool deck. If it doesn't sell, awesome. I've got a pile of cool decks. I don't care. <laughs> like, mm. I'm still going to do a few stocks here and there because I've got some awesome stuff coming. Um, yes, be, uh, it's, I've it's seen a couple. Awesome of, yeah, uh, new I've seen a couple and, of snippets. Yeah. And, uh, some and new things. There's I'm also like, been talks. Yeah. Sorry? What? There's also been uh, talks with uh, like. Us on the team, we also talked about a few cool things. So. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. It's gonna be great. It's gonna be so much fun, and that's uh, yeah. that's what that's what's got to be. It's got to be, it's got to be fun, or I'm I'm not down. So yeah, so, so I'm um, super stoked when, to have you guys as as teammates. This is gonna be so yeah. Fun. I I I'm still super stoked to uh, <laughs> to be on the team and to have everyone else on the team and yeah, like. I, I don't know. There are so many like really good people on uh, on the team, and yeah, I'm still That's still like the... blown away by every single clip that Eric posts. Oh like, my god, Eric's so good! <laughs> like every <But> single one. <laughs> he's a uh, he's a great person too. That's that's the the real prerequisite to mm -hmm. to you know. Kids ask me every day, hey, are you sponsoring? Can you sponsor me? Look at my clips. I'm like, okay, I'm going to look at your clips because I want to see some fingerboarding. Cool. But no, I'm not sponsoring. First of all, I mean, with the exception of yourself, I've met everybody else. I've hung out. I've had great times. I've looked everybody yeah. in the eye. That's important for a, a guy like me. If I can trust you and I know you're a good person, that's the best because that gives us what we have now. You know, mm -hmm. and it's not like I make you guys, I I would hate it if you guys are out there trying to sell my boards for me. You know, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like people get sponsored yeah. and it's like, oh, like, no, this, this board's the best. You got to have this. It's like, nah, it, it, that, that, I mean, I, that's, I, that's, I, that's I, the, I, that's the commercial way. That's the corporate yeah. way. If you want to make money with fingerboarding. Yeah, absolutely. Get yourself some, some people that are just going to be out there pushing your product, product, product. But that's not what I want. I want to get to. I I just want it to be as it has been. My boards, mm -hmm. for the most part, I don't have to push them on anybody. If somebody wants yeah. one, they they can get one, and they're usually pretty happy to get that board. And that's perfect. So yeah. if they're quote unquote, you know, selling themselves, you know, I don't have a job. I have to sell boards. And it sucks yeah. because if I had a job, I would, I, I wouldn't sell any more boards. I'd make them. I'm never going to stop making them, but yeah. I, w I just wouldn't sell them. That'd be amazing. But unfortunately, the reality is, I'm a full grown adult living, even living in the bush. It's, it's not cheap to live. I, I've absolutely narrowed or uh, sh my cost of living. Every luxury, the only luxury I allow myself is good coffee. That's it. <laughs> that is it. 
Um, everything else, I, I, you have that to. That is an important it. luxury. It is important. I am nothing without coffee. Uh, there would be no five luck if there was no coffee. Um, and cat food. I got to feed the cats. Um, there's been days where I've had nothing to eat and the cats have been fed. And that's all part of the sacrifice. I want to, I want to make great boards and live a simple life with, uh, no, no real, uh, drama. Just mm. lo love being simple. So uh, you simplify your life as much as possible. You shrink your, your just, just, you with shrink the occasional, just with the occasional lynx walking past your window. <laughs> yeah, that is, uh, that is fantastic. I, uh, I saw what I thought were lynx tracks the other day when I was outside, but, uh, you never know till, till you see it pass. I've got, I've got one other great link story, but I'll, I'll, I'll save it for uh, another time because it'll take up too much time in your podcast. <laughs> I've had, I've had a few encounters with the big cat and it's crazy. <laughs> yeah. Where, where I live, the, the biggest thing you stumble upon is like a fox or a really large raccoon. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. They're, they're, they're cool too. I, I got those around here too. I got moose and bears and wolves. Crazy. It's a, it's, I'm not that far uh, off a main highway, to be honest. I'm, I'm mm. back in the bush a long way, but for being semi close to civilization, it's as wild as it gets out where I live. And it's just, it's perfect for a guy like me. Just perfect. Yeah. I, uh, <laughs> I really want to, uh, really want to make the trip uh, oh. someday. I, as, as I'm as, working as on as it. We can. Absolutely. Yeah. It'd be amazing yeah. to have all you guys out here with uh, Yeah, would would yeah. be really dope. Oh, it'd be um, so Yeah, fun. one thing one thing uh I wanted wanted to ask you is uh where did the name Fifla come from and what does it have to do with your molds? <laughs> <laughs> well, Five Lock if, it was based loosely on a a, a Chinese term, wufu, w u f u, wufu, and it's a it's a fairly positive sort of message that the whole wufu uh, term gives off. But uh, there's a reference to five lux, so uh, I just saw that and I was like, "Whoa, five luck? That's cool. I like that a lot." I'm going to steal five luck. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> my first mold was called the Wu, and the second was called the Fu. I'm paying tribute to the original term, which I don't know. Nowadays, people know them by that, so that's cool. I almost think I have to, mm -hmm. to uh, sort of dim it down a shade as far as getting creative with names for shapes and molds and stuff like that. Can I? They get a lot of questions asking, I'm, asking odd questions. <laughs> so, I mean, uh, let's uh, let's jump in into a few of them. So, sure. if uh, if someone were to get their first five luck, yeah, which mold would you suggest to people? One hundred percent. If you're going straight off a tech deck and looking to get onto. A, a pro wooden deck, the Fu mold. It's mm -hmm. it's extremely universal. Um, people, even people, accomplished fingerboarders that prefer lower, flatter shapes, uh, they can they can dig the Fu. Because uh, so because the Fu has like kind of steep nose and tail, but not like super yeah, insane. It's, it's got enough enough bend that it'll uh it'll help you out if you're starting yeah um, but not like uh as like uh, an, uh how, what are they called the in begin to begin a wood decks like yeah yeah no no i'm blanking no. on the name but the you know which one's yeah. the really really steep one with concave where you basically yeah. can put your fingernail in like your your whole fingertip will disappear yeah. in the concave do you remember yeah. uh do you remember mitt decks uh no i don't no they, those those were some steep steep kick boards 
They look really but yeah. well, made, well made, but like the shape was just so extreme. A uh, broken yeah, knuckle no. was what I was thinking of. Yeah, exactly that. Uh, yeah, that shape. I'm, I'm seeing. I'm seeing that 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 shape appear in a lot of different shops now, not just uh, yeah, not just the old broken yes. knuckle. Ugh. Same. Yeah. So uh, so the foo is uh, like rather steep kicks, but not insane. Rather deep uh, concave, but not not yeah. too much concave. Yeah, like I, and, uh, it, it's it's really if you want to put a, a word on it, it's a heavy medium shape. Like it's yes, yes, it's got it's got a definite shape to it. That's yeah. I think from uh, from there, all all of your boards are more on the more mellow side, and this is basically the most extreme one of yours. Yeah, for now. Yeah, There's, there might be something in the works. <laughs> Yeah, I uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but we will, um, uh, we'll cover that later. And uh, the notes and the tail on the foo are they fairly similar there as well? Because I know that's a big thing uh, that you yeah. do on a lot of your shapes. The the foo mold actually has a just under a under a one degree um, higher angle. Like the nose is a bit steeper than the tail is. And uh, just a hair longer. Mm. So that that's one of the reasons why I uh, fell in love with uh, with my woo that I yeah. have, which I think we can just talk about the next in line. Sure. So the woo, um, yeah. What I really liked it, that it was basically a twin tail, but still with a distinguished like it was. It's not like a true a true twin tail, but. Yeah. It's fairly similar, so I really like doing uh, a bunch of varial flips and hard flips. Yeah. And when I do them in a line, I can just continue on. And I yeah. have a lot of friends who always need to do a shove it in between to turn the board around. Yeah, to get back to the tail. Yeah, um, like I, even I, I, even I am one of those friends. <laughs> <laughs> even really good uh, good fingerboarders like Julian Bono and. Uh, and Soundsphere, uh, my f two former yeah. co-hosts, they're both like insanely good, and <laughs> still they they always need to turn the board around because they're used to it that way. And with my five luck, I I have a way to identify the notes, but I don't really mind if it's turned. Yeah, gotcha. Upside down. Yeah, cool. But then that was that was wonderful to see you because the woo was the the. The mold that really got you going first yes like you know, yes. With, with with my boards and yeah to watch you when you first got it how you instantly i mean you, yeah. you were good you were you were always good um but there was all of a sudden you were a bit more good and yeah what's like, like the i, I noticed the, that <laughs> yeah me, me too because it was one of the more wider boards that i had because yeah. I uh, when I came back, I uh, switched to thirty-two millimeter because I didn't want to go straight from twenty-six millimeter to thirty-four. Yeah. And uh, so I started with a, a Berlin wood thirty-two millimeter with Black River trucks and Afobi Winkler wheels because I know I knew what a Berlin wood was. I knew who Afobi was. I yeah. knew who Martin Winkler was and what Winkler wheels are, and was like. Yeah, this sounds good. <laughs> yeah, oh, for sure. And, yeah, yeah, but uh, yeah, didn't really get warm with the setup, and then I uh, uh, experimented with a couple brands and had had a few that were decently well, but I never had the second board that I liked. Like every time I got the second board of either of those companies that I wrote, yeah, it yeah. never was the same. And mm. uh, then I. Uh, uh, I had a bit, a uh, bit of money, and every time, like for me, every time I have, a, like every time I get money for a specific thing, like when I have like a huge race at work or or start a new job, like every time yeah. I, uh, I had something like that, I always buy something to remind me of that. Like I, mm. I always want to be like, I'm not ju just going to spend that on booze and. Yeah, just yeah. on things that go away. I want to have something that reminds me on this was what I did with my first paycheck. Or oh, that's cool. And 
yeah, the five luck was uh, the first thing I did when I came up, uh, came upon a good sum of money. <laughs> uh, and yeah, bought a completely new setup with uh, new trucks, new wheels, and uh, and the uh, five luck. And yeah, I basically fell in love. <laughs> <laughs> ah, that's so awesome. Yeah. So, so yeah, that's, uh, the, uh, that's the power of the woo mold, right there. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> can you describe the woo mold uh, a bit? Sure. Absolutely. It's uh, again, it's. Uh, you could call it a more standard length board. You know, the average length is going to be 96, between 96, 97 millimeters. Um, it has a, a lower, uh, a lower concave, but it, it's got some bends right near the edge of it that kind of give you a little of that feels like it, your fingers are in it. You know, it's mm. not flat by any means. Um, and lower kicks than than the foo. The, yeah. The uh, for the longest time it was the the lowest kick uh, board that I that I would make. Right now the Bisco is is very close. Um, but the woo is is smooth. You watch uh, you watch Eric on a woo mold. Oh my, it's mm. it's technical perfection with that guy with that mold. So that's basically it. It's just a more technical. Um, it's, it's it's very smooth. I have a hard time riding it personally, but mm -hmm. I like I like more, uh, you know, higher kicks. I suppose. I uh, my my pop is really weird. It's a real old uh, self taught way of uh, fingerboarding. So I don't yeah. really really. Uh, I can't really get into the, the low tail myself, but. It's yeah. uh, it helps a lot of people uh, fingerboard uh, close to their full potential. I believe there's a lot of womb old riders out there. Yeah, and uh, a while ago, I think when uh, like uh, when I came on the team, like more than two years ago at this point, which is mm -hmm. insane. Um, you uh, basically convinced me to try another shape that I've heard a lot of people <laughs> enjoy quite a lot. I... And yeah, now I, like just a couple of days ago, I unset up my last uh, Wu. Oh, yeah. Like, uh, it's not my last, but oh, it was yeah. the last setup where I still had a Wu on it. And yeah. now I have uh, three Tech Fives that, I'm, <laughs> that I currently have <laughs> set up. Uh, Isn't with... it fun? It's, it's, yes. it's such a good board. It's, it's my absolute favorite one. So, um, for everyone who hasn't tried a Tech Five, it's... Uh, the shortest deck that you uh, offer, and yeah. uh, also probably the shortest wheelbase, but not like the wheelbase isn't as short as I've seen other short decks be. I know, and I it's, uh... and I don't know how it works because nose and tail are still <laughs> fairly normal sized. Oh, they so, are. They have to be. If if, yeah. if I'm if if I'm designing a mold, there's no way I'm having a short baby little tail. Yeah, because um, I. Yeah, and I don't like that about a lot of really short decks where they have really short yeah. wheelbase and a nose and tail that are barely even there. Uh, exactly. <laughs> and it's, you know, people nowadays, like all these companies are like, oh, well, I, I, I need to have a short shape too. So they'll make a short shape mold, but you, you got to know where to put stuff. You got to know what mm. that wheelbase is going to, to do for you. Uh, yeah. And you need to, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta measure the angles, um, and yeah. make sure that you're gonna have something that's usable. Because once you once you get a mold uh, machined for you, you can't really fix it. <laughs> it's, yeah, it, that's it. And like, if it sucks, then you're stuck with a, a dud mold. Ask me. Yeah, how what? I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what what really helped me? Uh, like the same time I. Uh, switched to the tech five i also switched to really big wheels for the first time like i i did ride uh oak rv 2 vs for a while yeah but then got off of them and exclusively rode uh, uh flat face wheels for a good couple of years and around the time when i got the uh when i got the tech five i did get my second set of uh, joy cult xls because yeah. I had one before, hated it, and traded them away. Yeah. And when I had the Tech 5, I 
just got in a new set of joy cult xls gave them another try and on ever since then i really like big wheels on the tech 5 like that yeah it's uh it's a good that's the pop right. angle that i like yeah R uh, ryan's the same way he likes he likes big wheels on on tech 5s he likes and i i say joy cult xls but uh two decks i uh, i have in my hand right now aren't joy cult xls but they're basically the same dimensions uh, hand yeah, jobs similar, and similar sizes and elasticos yeah yeah uh, both of which are ex excellent wheels yes they uh, got, they are i've got sets from both those both those guys and i love them both yeah i'm waiting yeah. i'm waiting for so, for chris to send me a, a set of his larger wheels i'm stoked to try them yeah uh, i just talked uh, with him about that and uh, should be in its way oh cool. yeah uh, so yeah I just, and... got a, I just got a setup sorry i'm just talking about wheels i just bought a set and we were talking about this before i still haven't set them up uh but my friend kyle sent me a set of slime oak bowls acid green sorry um oak bowls i've always wanted acid green oak bowls and i'm stoked I oh nice them. yeah i'm waiting for some trucks from ryan and then i'll have yeah. to have two setups because i only have one set of trucks and one set of wheels right now well no I've maybe, got some maybe that will change yeah yeah I'm, I'm pretty pretty pumped on yeah on yeah, and the, Setting those up. like, I really tried getting back to Oak Wheels, uh, like, I think, uh, like, some, yeah, it, it's one and a half years ago, I uh, went to uh, Pateo, oh, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Uh, and I did buy, uh, I did buy two sets of wheels of Ricardo, because, I mean, when, when you're at an event like that, and Ricardo is such an amazing guy and he's the best like he's yeah he's i i can't uh, i can't imagine every anyone saying a bad word about him like if 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 anybody's gonna say a bad word about him they, they're gonna have a problem with me so yeah Whatever. and let, so let so I, <laughs> yeah <laughs> he's so cool we got so, uh, i met him at uh the rendezvous 29 oh, nice. i think i, I Eric and I got to go to a rendezvous and it was awesome. Uh, but Ricardo was there and uh, it was one, he gave me a set of wheels. Like he, I, I gave him a board, but he also gave me a set. So I've got a set of, of bowls and a, a package that I'm never going to open because they came straight out of <laughs> Ricardo's hand. But we got, we had so much fun at Mike's uh, in the evening, um, hanging out with Ricardo. It was so much fun. Beautiful dude. Beautiful dude. Yeah. Yeah, so I just had to get uh, some wheels when I was at his place or at uh, Pateo, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, got uh, got uh, a set of uh, of I think RV two Vs and uh, no, it might have been the bowls and a set of minis. Yeah, and traded traded away both in like a month. Like <laughs> I, they they just because I I used to write uh, oak minis for quite a while as well, oh. but. Yeah, every time I read them now, I don't know. I I end, I always end up trading them away. Gotcha. Yeah. That's so a, uh, in that same package, I got these uh, acid green bowls from my friend Kyle. There, he sent me a set of uh, maple wheels. They're from Eastern Canada. Oh yeah. I haven't tried them yet, so I, I got to put those on. Uh, yeah, I heard heard about them, uh, yeah. and they they looked fine from what I've seen so far. Yeah, it seems to be. Uh, Seems to be more more than more than three wheel companies these days, eh? <laughs> yeah, like I mean, I uh, told you earlier that when when I was around, there was Tech Deck wheels, mm -hmm. Winkler wheels, and Eurold as an in between solution for like fifteen bucks or something like that. Yeah, and the times are changing, that's for sure. Yeah, and <laughs> wheels are uh, wheels seem to be the big thing that's that's had a big push in the last year or two like before that there yeah. were uh deck companies and tape companies popping up right and left yeah. and they, they now still are. yeah they, <laughs> they still are but i think the frequency uh especially <clears throat> with deck companies has gone down a bit and instead we have so many wheel companies popping up left right yeah. and center yeah the uh i don't know <laughs> 
There's still new tape companies popping up. I've I've been contacted lately by now four new tape companies. And like I don't I don't know if these guys understand. There's only two tapes I'll ever uh, put in with a five. I say that could, there's stuff that I've tried and and I know uh, work <laughs> amazingly mm-hmm. well. Like it's it's the clean sheets from Northwoods and FBS. I mean they're my yeah. favorite tapes of. Yeah, I think I currently have a set of clean sheets on because I I usually write FBS exclu- exclusively. Yeah. Oh, and uh, yeah, I think the clean sheets is basically the only one that I write that isn't FBS. Yeah. So uh, yeah, we we now covered uh, three modes. So the uh, the tech five as the yeah. more techy uh, mode, I would say, because it's. Yeah, I think the, uh, the the tech five is the name is quite quite apt like yeah it's yeah. A, it's it suits it very very well and in that i'm trying to i don't want to be one of these guys that has like 50 different geometric shapes for their boards with points sticking out here and that kind of stuff like yeah that, that was that was one of the reason uh i didn't like dk decks quite that much because the decks yeah. were amazing and like nothing against that but when i tried getting the same deck uh, like the second one of a deck that I had, yeah. I just couldn't f- figure out which shape, which shape it was because he had like ten shapes, and yeah. yeah. So what I'm what I'm really wanting to do every time I I put a shape like right now lately I've been working this '90s inspired shape into every mold, and that's not just you know I don't uh, I don't use these cookie cutter router templates everybody uses right. I mm. prefer to, to, to make my boards. So working in a new shape is tricky. You can't, mm. It's, uh, it's not as, as easy as it, as it, as it sounds. Um, but mm. this, so I'll, I'm hoping and then by the end of maybe next month that each of the four molds will have three shapes. And that's about all a guy wants to do. Like, I don't want to mess yeah. around. I get Cause, guys, cause right now you I get have people asking me to do all sorts of little adjustments and stuff to my shapes, and it's, I tried. It, uh, Simon there, uh, he ordered a board the other day, and I felt so bad. Um, Volbart, I think, is his name. Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, no, like uh, uh, Volbart. Uh, Volbart, yeah. yeah. Anyway, awesome dude, and he 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 bought a board from me the other day, and he wanted an egg shaped tail, and I was like. Okay, I'll try. So I couldn't do it. I, I burnt three boards up trying to get this tail on it. And it's, it's just not my shape. It doesn't work yeah. with my stuff. And so he's really cool about it. He's an awesome dude. So I we talked about it and I got some I got something for him. But um yeah, I just want to have my three shapes that I know function. Because yeah. to me it's much more important to have a board that works and performs to an incredibly high level yeah i don't no part of me makes a board just to make a board that looks like it should be good because that's we are surrounded by that right now and they're for the most part they all charge more money than i do for decks and so but when, everyone when, charges when, more money than you do yeah <laughs> well there's a little secret to how i do things and it's uh, I'll tell you what it is. It's, uh, there's no greed in my actions ever. No, no sense of that. No ego. No. Gr- I'm super confident because I know my stuff's good, but I'm mm. not high on myself because of it. And I'm not going to charge you a premium just because of my name or another yeah. superficial reason. I'm making yeah. you a board that's going to work. And, and I. That's that. I, I can understand people charging for uh, more money when they have actually costs that are linked to it. Like uh, sure. Flint, Flint is pretty much the only example I know <laughs> where he actually tries to pay uh, the people who make uh, the graphics and uh, ha- gets like screen print uh, screens made and everything. So yeah. that's the pretty much the only company that I would personally uh, pay a premium for a premium for and i agree it's uh every other deck that's, that's like on, 
Oh. Yeah, like if 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 that's the case, for sure, it's and it's uh, uh, completely understandable at that, you know. But there's a lot of oh. uh, a lot of stuff out there that isn't quite like that, and yet, hmm. Yes. So the bottom line is, I get, I get a lot of I get a lot of people um, say stuff to me like, "Why is your board this cheap? It makes it look not good." And I I just tell them, you know, for one thing, I'm I'm poor, right? I'm not. People see uh, an Instagram account with like ten thousand followers; they don't realize I've been out here for like five six years, and I'm not a big company. You just they see that and it's like, "Oh, big company! Hey, sponsor me." Oh, geez. Mm. But anyway, I, uh, oh, how do you, how do you put this? Uh, oh, Yana, we got to do one of those stop things here. Yeah, sure. Yeah. I'll just, uh, write, write this down. Yeah. We I just, we just continue and I cut this out. Yeah. I just lost my train of thought there for a second. Yeah. No worries. Oh yeah, I think I, I I've got what I <laughs> was trying to say. It's back. <laughs> uh, should we just go now? Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Just just continue. Yeah, okay, so the people that say that to me, like, oh, your boards must not be good because they're not expensive, are exactly the people that I never want to have one of my boards. They'll never appreciate it. What yeah. I want is the the person who's like me. Not a lot of money, but they really want a good board. So they pay a little bit of money. You got to pay something, but it's less than everywhere else. <laughs> yeah. And when that person gets the package, especially if they've been shopping around first and buying all sorts of other stuff, when they get that package from me and open it up and put their fingers on that board, I love those messages I get after people open their packages. Because yeah. that. Yeah, I've been, I've been recently. Starting to uh, to talk to uh, to a guy who had this happen to, and I I let's not mention names because no, yeah, don't have to. but uh, yeah, he uh, he bought uh, boards from you and from another company, and paid not really double, but basically double mm. for the other company, <laughs> and wasn't wasn't really impressed with what he got, and was really impressed with you and what you had and i think he's getting to a point where he can rival a lot of five luck collections <laughs> yeah there's uh well i must i must stress this i don't make them to collect them i want you to kill them or yeah. try to but there are some some impressive collections out there that i know of and it's yeah. it's humbling it's i'm pretty flattered to see that stuff too but um, as long as you give them some love, set them up. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I I try to uh, set up like even even the boards that are on my wall from other companies or uh, or some of you, I've set up every single one. Like yeah. I I have a few uh, uh, I have a few of you that I hadn't set up yet, but those I put on my wall as a. They look great and I have setups right now. So let's just put them here as like, instead of putting them in a box, I just put them on the wall. Oh yeah. Like you don't have to set them up right away. Yeah. You can, and, set, you can definitely hang them up for a bit. Yeah. And since then anymore. I'm, uh, I transitioned to the uh, tech five mode. So, uh, yeah, they, they probably <laughs> stay on my wall for a bit. Yeah, but well, yeah, sure. recent, recently I had to pull, uh, pull down one of the boards. Uh, and I think this is a, uh, great way to uh, transition even though we hadn't covered the bisco mold but yeah. Uh, yeah. before uh, it, like I uh, did put one of the Azi uh, five lock boards down because I needed one and I wanted to ride it again and yeah. so yeah let's uh, let's talk about that collaboration because oh. I know that it meant a lot of you and uh, oh. I uh, I don't think I'm saying too much that it also meant a lot of uh, a lot for tky and well, that's uh yeah that's uh i don't know that's that's a huge thing for me it's not not and like, like going back to having uh ego about stuff 
Mm-hmm. I'm not. Uh, uh, it's, this stuff like this doesn't go to my head, but that's one of the biggest things that's ever happened to me. One of the coolest things to ever happen to me is to have what is one of my favorite fingerboarders of all time say, "Hey, mm-hmm. Bert, we're we're gonna do a collab." Like, okay, sure. Uh, what do we do? And he loved the fact that I was living out in the cabin and. Yeah, you know, I think that was even. I think that was even part of his sales pitch when I bought the very first uh, five lock uh, from him, where he was like, "Hey, yeah, yeah, this guy lives like in a cabin in the woods and m- makes the boards." And I was like, "Yeah, sounds amazing. Give me one." <laughs> <laughs> the the all the cabin boards I used to send him used to all smell like my my wood stove. The winter boards, if he'd order boards in the winter, I'd be like, "Oh, you're gonna love these." When he opened the box or the bag, it just mm, it smoke. Yeah, I remember but, you uh, uh, it, it, sending pictures of you chopping wood like for yeah. for winter and everything. Oh, that's that's a whole different yeah. So right there, yeah. But yeah, that, so what a, what an honor uh, to have. TKY say that to me. Then he then he hits me with, "We're gonna do a, a a graphic that's got you know, if it's gonna pay tribute to the bush. He loves nature. He loves being outside in it. And yeah. It says we're gonna have, we're gonna pay a little tribute to your cabin on there, and we're gonna get you know, Katita to do it. What? Okay, sure, yeah. I'm in. And yeah, what, uh, to to what everyone she who kill it, hey, she did. To everyone oh. who. Who doesn't know uh, what a graphic looks like? I uh, try to put it uh, in the show notes, and it's basically a stylized, uh, like uh, an illustration of a cabin in the woods. Mm-hmm. But I think the like, I was blown away when when I saw the graphic because uh, the uh, the branches and the, yeah. and the words yeah because oh, there God. are a couple of trees in there. And the branches of the tree is, uh, spell Azzy and Five Luck. And yeah. I, like, the second I saw that, I was like, I, I need <laughs> to, I need to get one of those boards to never set it up ever to just that live on I, my wall. I, can, I will allow it for, for special ones like that. Yeah. yeah. Just keep one. I have yet to make myself one and I'd better do that. Because I don't have many of the graphic left, yeah. I just uh, I just sent more to to the shop there, and I I better get on making myself one. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, I so that's, I that's I don't even know what else to say about that 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 whole collaboration. I can tell you it's not going to be our last. Yeah, uh, we've got some other stuff coming, but um, for me that's probably if I don't I don't know a more meaningful board. Yeah, I've, I've ever seen uh, or ever connected with. Yeah, Im- um, immediately after my uh, my first one of that was uh, at a point where I was like, okay, I'm going to set up a new one. I just had to get another one with the same graphic and have a fresh one again. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and the thing uh, that I really like about the collaboration is that uh, you you and TKY have a similar mindset uh, when it comes to the whole business. Uh, I'm just going uh, to call it business side of fingerboarding. Because yeah. uh, I I don't think a lot of people know this about TKY, but TKY also isn't in it to make money. He's No, he's not. He's also... Yeah, he's <laughs> doing it because he loves it. And he's doing it until he can't. Like... The only the only reason he would ever stop doing the shop is that he's broke. Like that that's the and, that's, uh, and until this doesn't happen, the shop continues. Well, and it's because you said it. He loves it. He loves the scene. And yeah. if you if you if you have the the balls or the you know the courage to have a brick and mortar shop like him. And oh, have yeah. it for uh, have it survive for uh, for yeah. this long, because so there have been people there's... who tried it, but yeah, oh yeah, for sure there have. Um, the uh, the the real catch is 
yes, there there is a business side to it, and I'm sure both of him and I feel the same way about the business side. It's if we could do without it, we'd be much happier. Yeah. But at the same time, unfortunately, bills don't pay themselves. And for him, yeah. having the over the overhead of a of a shop and the, the pressure and the stress of owning a shop. I've owned shops before. I know what's up. Um, mm-hmm. I I can't say enough about how he's doing it and I'm I'm proud of the man. Absolutely proud yeah. of him for, for what he's yeah. doing. Yeah. I'm super grateful uh, to have this this shop nearby because I didn't think I would have gotten back into figureboarding because I only got back in because I I always like even like I stopped for nine years which I think I mentioned in every single episode but <laughs> I always kept fingerboards close like every every flat I le- ever lived in I always moved my small box of uh, 26 millimeter uh, Berlin woods and other wood boards from the early 2000s and yeah. they, I always had them near my desk and in every single flat I ever lived in and, yeah, and so they're always with you they're, yeah and I I gotten like ever since I moved to Berlin I would ch- like I would check in with the fingerboard scene every once in a while and look look at Black River DE see what happens yeah. when I uh, uh, when I type in fingerboard DE and stuff like that and so I knew that uh, Black River had a shop in Berlin and was like yeah I need to check that out and it took me I think three or four years to actually check it out <laughs> uh, yeah yeah I think three uh, yeah, around two years uh, till yeah. I actually uh, actually visited the shop for the first time, and I immediately got sucked back in, and now I talk on a podcast about it. <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome. Yeah. It's, it's 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 great. You're doing a wonderful thing, and the thing that I love most about your podcast is, and of course, no internet. I haven't heard all of them, but I've heard some of them. And, and and you'll you'll get uh, some more. Yeah, um, and I'm looking forward to that because I tell you the winter gets a little long out here when when you got not much to listen to. Uh, um, but how you uh, discuss not what's trendy right now. I mean, you, you cover some of that stuff, but yeah. that's not your main focus. Yeah, because I mean, let's face it. There, there was better stuff <laughs> and it was all a few years ago. Yeah. Um, even in the, in the, the five years that five luck's been official, um, I've seen, I've seen the, the scene here in North America almost get to the point where it's like, Oh no, I, oh, I don't know if this makes me happy anymore. It's not the scene that I fell in love with. Mm-hmm. That's for sure. But, the fact of the matter is I making boards is my passion. That's, that's it. It says right in my Instagram bio half the time. Yeah. This is passion, not product. And you can choose to believe it or not. There's a lot of people on Instagram taking pictures, making boards that look like someone else's boards too. You know, there's, it's a world of monkey see monkey do. And right now there is a lot of monkeys. Yeah. (laughs) The old, that's the easiest way I can put it, and uh, you can you can believe what I say or not, but I assure you I'm the same person in real life as I am on the internet. Yeah. And I think I think you'll find that isn't true for everybody. Yeah, um, yeah. That... The ones the ones that are the are the the real good ones, hmm. in my opinion. Uh, one thing before I get to the next question. Uh, mm-hmm. could, could you maybe move uh, move in your chair a bit less because it's uh, creaking quite quite loudly? Oh, <laughs> I'm, I'm getting I'm getting worked up talking about things and I'm starting to rock. Yeah, no, uh, yeah, no, no worries. I uh, I noticed it like two minutes ago. I was like, yeah. Okay, I... well, I'll uh, I'll keep an eye on it for sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but I now I'm, all, now I'm all paranoid about moving. No, oh. no worries. It's yeah, <laughs> it's fine. Okay. Yeah, so uh, I really like cultivating scenes, and I really like, uh, like I'm a firm believer of 
when you want a fingerboard scene in your area, you need to start doing something. Oh, absolutely. And I, you always see who does it for the scene and who doesn't. And I, since I've been around way back when it was a really niche scene with like one company that you, that, or like two companies that everyone knew and like even still you, you know, you knew everyone. Like it's not yeah. like I was like, I wasn't popular or uh, known. Like I, I was part of like a, few people who uh, hung around in the forum all day so those oh, yeah, pe yeah. those people knew me but Fair other than that no one really knew who I was but still when I went to uh, Fast Fingers for the first time in I think 2004 like I got the cell phone number from Martin Ernberger to call him when I don't find it like that's that was how the wow. scene was like yeah, it, it was awesome. And, and that wasn't because I was like, he knew who I was. I don't think he knew who I was. It was just like, yeah, uh, you're one of us. Call me if you need to, need directions. And well, exactly. Yeah. And so mm -hmm. I always, I, I always gravitate to brands that care about the scene and yeah, care about making fingerboarding cool for everyone and. Yeah, just doing it for the love. Yeah, that's uh, you know, up until up until last year, I was taking trips to the next province over here. It's called Alberta, and you know, Don when Don was still uh, on the team, um, which I got to get him back fingerboarding. Yeah, he's the best. Uh, anyway, Don and I we did some road trips up to like Calgary and Edmonton and hosted little meetups and tried to get yeah. scenes going and stuff. And, you know, that, that kind of thing that, that there was no sponsors. Like you see nowadays for, for like little events, like somebody's having an event, 10 people are going to show up, but they got 400 sponsors yeah. on the thing. You yeah. can't even see anything like, oh, that there was no sponsors with stuff that I was doing. It wasn't even like, it's not even, I'm not even going, Hey, look, it's five luck doing something. No, it's fucking, it, it's Burton Dawn we're looking for spots and we're looking for other shredders. That's it. Like, let's yeah. have some fun. Let's find it. The, we really had a good scene going in, in a town called Edmonton, but mm -hmm. this, this little COVID-19 thing is really, uh, really yeah. making havoc. Yeah. Let's, let's hope that, uh, we can combat that shit. God. I, soon. It's, I mean, for you, it's, it's not like, for you, that's not that many things that changed. <laughs> well, not not for me. I mean, yeah. I'm out here. Like I think I've mentioned before, I I go to town for supplies, like food and and whatever other things I need. I leave once every five weeks, so it's almost you know it's once a month that I I go and have human interaction, uh, which will drive some people absolutely batty. But for some reason, it works for me. Mm -hmm. But it's uh, it's still I know a lot of people that have been affected by it, and it's it's no joke, and it just keeps mutating. Yeah, that's, that's problematic. I I'm shocked that there is a there is an actual vaccine made already that people are trusting, but is it going to? get in everybody and be effective yeah by the time it would this finish finishes mutating will it ever finish mutating who knows yeah we currently have a have a huge discussion in germany about uh one of the vaccines and how much it needs to work and yeah that's yeah. all uh yeah let's it's it's crazy so yeah. friends be safe out there just don't don't mess around yeah if someone it's not about your freedom. I don't think having to wear a mask. I think it's a little bit more about caring about other people. Um, but that's just me. Yeah. Uh, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not exactly a people expert anymore. Uh, but I think that if you can do the right thing, you probably should. But yeah. I don't know. We'll have to. We'll have to see and hope. I uh, hope that the the world comes out on the proper side of this because it's the that scale is is 
pretty tippy. I mean, it could go either way. Yeah. So and got to hope for the best. Yeah, because we're we're approaching a year when we are reco- recording this, and I I think even those people who aren't financially or uh, health wise affected by it, uh, even even and I I can consider myself uh, part of that because I I can work from home. I yeah. can stay in my flat every day. I don't need to go out unless I want to shop yeah. for groceries. And so I'm, I'm like, I consider myself very fortunate in, uh, in that. And we're getting to, and I have a lot of hobbies that I can do from my couch or from my the desktop essential. and everything. You gotta and, have something to do. Yeah. And I think we, we've seen a big resurgence of fingerboarders. Uh, of people that used to have a fingerboard way back when, or saw it a while ago, or uh, were skating and needed something to scratch that itch, and absolutely, uh, I, th- I think in a couple of years we uh, we will have like a whole generation of uh, COVID fingerboarders. Who, I think so. I think you're right. Yeah, and uh, be like, hey, when did you start? And, they were like, yeah, well, when when the world shut down. <laughs> yeah, when I couldn't leave my house, I figured I need something to do. Yeah. So I found this. And hey, that's it's you could find a lot worse things to do. Yeah, definitely. So, um morning's pretty good. Before uh, before we jump into the uh to a section I always do uh, with all of my guests, um yeah. let's just briefly mention uh the fourth mold uh, that you have cuz uh I derailed oh, the sure. conversation a bit earlier. Um, uh, the fourth mold is called the Bisco. Bisco, yeah. And, and Bisco is Bisco is short for biscotti, which is the name of Eric's cat. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I Eric, love that. Eric, <laughs> yeah, Eric uh, Eric designed this mold. This was Eric's mold, and Eric decided uh, I'm not going to make any boards anymore. I'm going to sell my mold. Wow. And there's a few of us that had a look at that mold before, you know, when he was making his decks, mm-hmm. he's a great deck maker. He's very, very good. Um, he actually does one of the best clear coat finishes I've ever seen. Alex from Simple in Columbia. Alex makes wonderful boards and his clear coat is insane. Eric's is right up there with that. Uh, from anyway, from Simple uh, decks or? Yeah. Yeah. Alex, think uh, think I have one somewhere. I'm, yeah, he's another he's another proper deck maker. Like he's he's uh, he's a handmade. He's 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 a friend of mine. He's yeah. he's a good dude. <laughs> I love Alex. Um, but Eric, so Eric designed this mold, and it's of course Eric's the, the just a technical machine. So he designed this mold with with fairly low kicks. And they're twin. They're the same angle, the same the same length on his original z- design. So it really fits the uh, the five luck style. It does. It does. And uh, the beautiful thing about it is the concave in it is a little bit deeper, and it's it just creates this board that's I've never ridden one like it, you know. And that's another reason why when he said he was going to sell the mold, I was like, dude, let's let's. Okay, I'm going to buy that mold so we can keep it within, you know, yeah. within us. Because I, it's too nice of a mold to just plop out there and have someone not understand what it's Yeah, I, I, always, it's, uh, it's, it's, I always have one set up. Yeah. It's, it's such a good shape. More people are, are, it's really tough having four molds. I got to be honest. Like, yeah, four, four is a lot. Too. <laughs> four but, is a lot. But the, with the differences between them all, and it's not just typing in numbers into a, somebody's little computer uh, yeah. shape generator, like, oh, I like this number. Well, let's see yeah. what this looks like. Like, nah, these these numbers are are calculated a bit more finely. And I also like that uh, basically uh, the the free boards that I like that I usually always have one set up of each at least. Um, yeah. They uh, like every time someone asks me, "Hey, uh, what five luck do you recommend?" 
I just pull out one of each and be like, hey, this is the shortest, this is the longest, this is the one in the middle. Oh, yeah. And yeah. I really like that that it's that way. And that I can tell people, okay, if you like shorter wheelbase, go for this. If you like more steep kicks, go for this. And yeah. yeah. But uh, one thing... If they're, if, they're, if they're curious about it too, I'll get emails or I'll get questions and I can explain the yeah. differences and why they're they're different and yeah. I can almost get a feel like there's there's a lot of people out now that buy my boards because they use my boards yeah and a lot of those people when they send me a message saying hey I need a board and I'll just be like oh yeah the 33.3 yeah yeah yeah, no problem. Thank you. <laughs> yeah I know I, so many I know I know so many riders specs it's not even funny my my brain is I I so don't think it's uh, a weird place <laughs> I, I can't remember the last time I actually had to tell you that I want 33.3 because <laughs> no. yeah it's it's the whiff I like <laughs> yeah um yeah uh, before we jump into uh, the rapid fire question let's just briefly mm. mention the uh, the shapes of, uh, as well because you you so far have two main shapes yeah. and uh, one of them is like. Let, uh, I'm going to call it a classic fingerboard shape, so a very popsicle yeah. shape, yeah. and the popsicle other one or, uh, is a very boxy yeah. shape. Yeah, it's a bit of a bit of a squared off, uh, squared off shape, but not yes. like not not like an old school square. Like no, it's no. it's this has this has yeah. curvature to the the edges, and, and that's and that's why I like it's it because uh, I hate the uh, like I hate the very boxy tail. Like I can't really write a. Uh, an old school shape and yeah, that's uh yeah this, this shape is 99 percent of the uh the newer boxy shapes that people have seen a picture and they've picture one and they've tried to recreate it or whatever they just get it too boxy it's not yeah not, not well planned out but the other thing that you got to be careful of and that's what i had to be really careful of is you don't want to uh step on anybody's toes beforehand and and for me that's uh, one of the the most popular and, and best squared shapes has always been a whoop. Um, oh, okay. And so I yeah I, never I never had a whoop. Ever. No, I haven't had one either. But uh, I, I'll be honest, I do like the guy that makes them. Mm. <laughs> he's a pretty he's a pretty decent character. Um, but the you, you don't want to look like that. Yeah. But there was a couple. There were a couple of guys that tried copying Zach's cozy mold a number of years ago, and it just it was just such a bad look. So you don't want to do that, friend. Yeah. You don't want to. When when people ask me to make a shape that looks like something stacked makes, I'll just tell them yeah, you gotta you gotta go to hell. I'm not doing that. That's yeah. This nice guy, I'm not I'm not ripping his shape. A while He's ago, I saw uh, I saw someone posting a. Uh, like it, it's been a good couple of years at this point, but I saw someone posting a shape where they copied the split ply uh, of uh, of uh, beast pants, and basically did the uh, uh, the five section thing. Like it looked, oh, yeah, it, I remember that. It looked exactly like a beast pants. Exactly uh, like it. Just not like the the cuts weren't as clean, and you and I was like, ah. Oh, that, that's not a great look. These some of these some of these people that do things like this are so new and green. They don't realize that fingerboarding has been around a long time. Yeah, they think, oh, look, it's this new thing. I'm gonna I'm gonna get in on this too. And like, no. Yeah, so, and and a lot of people. Can, the worst thing you can say is I'm the world's first to do this because no doubt you're about the sixth. Or yeah. Three. And a lot of people who uh, get into fingerboarding, uh, like I heard so many people say, yeah, I'm going to make decks and it's because uh, it's going to be way cheaper. And I'm like, well, if you want to make good decks, that you can buy a lot of decks with the amount of money you need to spend to to get it oh, right. Sure. Yeah. I'll I'll always advocate if someone wants to make boards for themselves, yeah. do it. Absolutely. I I have I'm a good sure. friend who uh, loves making them for himself, and he 
gives stuff to people occasionally, but I don't think he ever... Like, he's one of those guys who's just Im an amazing guy. Like, he uh, he's the one who uh, who is currently drawing something up for me. And he... Oh, yeah, right on. And yeah, yeah. he's also... Uh, he just built a spot for the Azi Berlin shop and oh, made, made the same for, one for himself and just gave one to the shop one day and uh, gave it like every every shop birthday he always makes something for the shop and makes something for Timo and makes something yeah. for all of us locals and he like he's just the best dude ever people. and like I he always feel best. I always feel bad because I I consider myself being quite good at uh, giving gifts to people like I'm mm -hmm. I either won't give you anything or I will give you something that I think is really good or really cool. Yeah. And like uh, you show me some of the Christmas presents you made this year. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. And uh, like every time he he brings something uh, for a shop birthday, I'm like, ah, damn. <laughs> yeah. So uh, <laughs> so yeah, it, I I love the way uh, he makes sports because he makes them for him. He uh, draws a graphic on him and. Gives them to a couple friends who need one or want one, and that's about it. And I don't like anyone who like just grabs a three D printed mold and slaps a logo on it. And yeah, yeah, yeah. No thanks. Yeah, but uh, ah, do, I do. You can't stop it. I mean, it's already yeah, it's already rampant. But yeah, and let's uh, let's not uh, not well on the. No on the negative side and uh, i mean uh, to everyone uh, out there wanting to start make decks just do it for yourself like just start and if you're at a point where you feel like they're uh, they're well enough made and that you actually enjoy writing them that's the point where you can think about making a stock and selling it sure but also don't uh, don't, don't, don't do it until you've sent the same person two boards yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah i think that's a great metric and also yeah it is if if you start selling boards and demand the same price as berlinwood or someone who's been around for that long think about yeah. why someone should spend the money to uh, to get one of your boards instead oh, of sure anything else i'm all, i'm only five years old here i'm still a pretty new face mm -hmm. um i would never i mean there's been a couple boards where there'll be a few dollars more because it, they're worth it yeah but for the most part my prices haven't really and changed that much yeah and it's your like your prices years. are because your price you you are from canada and your prices are oh, in yeah. canadian so for Everyone who's from Europe or from uh, from the United States, for us, they are fairly cheap. And yeah, they are for sure. Yeah. So, but uh, at the same time, I always have to wonder about people here. I'm proud to be part of the Canadian scene and someone who's trying to contribute to it. And I'm not going to charge in U.S. dollars just because it's going to make me a few more bucks on a board. Mm -hmm. That's that's I don't like that at all. Yeah, I I really don't respect that. It's it's weak. I used to have a I used to have a discount code on my website where you could you know things were listed in the U.S. dollar. This was this was early on. And this discount code would equalize it with the Canadian dollars. And nobody got that huge advantage in the States. Everybody paid the same thing. And I liked that until this lovely person stole, he copied a bunch of shit from me, but he, he stole a discount code off my website because he was mad at me. <laughs> That's the, uh, so that, that was the end of that. I thought, you know what? No. That's uh, he can have it. He wants to. He wants to look cool and, and charge in U.S. dollars. Go ahead, bro, but not from not me. Yeah, you, you 
you told me a few things about the story, and I uh, I don't really want to dwell yeah. on it because I I know that you <laughs> you don't want want to do this public. Oh, yeah, I but I, I, ain't gonna, I ain't gonna name names yeah. because karma but, works on its uh, own. Uh, to anyone listening, just just do cool stuff and try to be a good person. We <laughs> none of us are perfect. I I've been an asshole quite a few times. I just try not to be, and that's the best I can do. That's uh, that's all we should be. If we can be the best people that we can be every day, that's good. Yeah, that's let's that's let's get a bit more lighthearted. Uh, all right. Let's so let's jump into the rapid fire, which usually <coughs> isn't very rapid. So uh, let's start with uh, what's your favorite wheel? My favorite wheel. Um, I do like urethane wheels. Um, tough to say a favorite right now because. You know, I've got ones I've ridden for a long time. I've got some, uh, I've got some old oaks here that that are really old. Um, but I've, I honestly, I've, I've had a set of Elastico street shapes on for about a year, and uh, I've been loving them. Yeah, uh, the Elasticos are, are a great wheel as well. Um, I'm digging them. So that that's currently currently up there. Hand jobs wheels were really good too. I'm just yeah. waiting for a fresh set because I, I I wore the other ones out. Yeah. I destroyed them. I shredded them. <laughs> yeah, they, they they are a great wheel as well. Um, what's your favorite deck or shape? Uh, my my favorite deck, and, we, and you've asked me this before, and I always say the first one because it is my favorite. The G15 flat face is a wonderful board. Um, yeah. But I think about it more too, and there was a, a shape by Homewood too. He had a high shape that I loved. So there's there's two real good boards. And uh, which one of your shapes do you ride? I ride Tech Five, uh, typically the rounded, like the street. Mm -hmm. I call it. Yeah. Um, thirty three and a half by just under ninety four, and that's uh, that's what I get on the daily. But I am going to have uh, one of these nineties inspired shapes. I got them. I call them Cinco for right now. Mm -hmm. I don't know what I'm gonna do. Yeah, but anyway, it's it's a. I got to make you a board of it. Yeah, I, I don't think I tried that shape yet. No, Ryan yeah. and I are the only guys uh, that have tried them. Yeah. Uh, I just sold my first one. Yeah, I saw it in the deck uh, of the day. A couple a couple days ago, yeah. and I sold the second one today. Uh, it was just that wonderful little split ply there today. Um, and mine I gave to a relatively new fingerboarder. Um, I just slipped into one of his packages and, yeah. and now he's got it and he's loving it too. So nice. I, I'm calling that, I'm calling that shape, uh, tried, tested and true and ready to go. Nice. Um, yeah. what's your favorite trick on flat? My favorite trick on flat is the backside 180 kick flip. It's a classic. <laughs> Love it. Um, and what's your favorite trick on any obstacle? Uh, that almost always is kick flip back tail. Uh, it, it just this is my favorite tricks when I was skateboarding, and it's a favorite trick. I I just love watching it happen. Yeah, yeah. So it, when you get a good kick foot back tail, it's so fun. Yeah, if it's like, especially when you lock in like just the right way, and it doesn't bounce down, and it's just like oh yeah, very smooth. No, uh, yeah, no no nose dip or yeah. nothing. Just right we, in there, both fingers. Like when uh, when we play a game of skate at the Azzy shop, and because. Yep. Like we who play there, we've we known each other for like five years plus. Like all of us, yeah. We played hundreds of games. Skate. We we yeah. are usually quite strict with what we count and what we get don't. And I've improved because of that. And oh yeah, every time uh, the no step happen, we call it the basketball, and uh, <laughs> we'll just say basketball and. Then it's like, yeah, yeah, you're right. Your yeah. turn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, you almost bounce in the nose. Yeah. So. Um, that's that's good. Uh, what's your favorite song right now? Um, it's still the same uh, same song I've been listening to. Uh, a little bit heavier stuff, uh, but it's a band called Pussifer, and it's a song oh, yeah. called The Remedy. Yeah. Yeah, The Remedy. Good song fires you up 
Yeah, that's what I start all my all my sanding sessions with. Nice. I, I put that in a couple of. Yeah, for, for me it changes pretty much daily. Yeah. T today it's uh, zombies ate my pirate ship from Ailstorm. <laughs> um, Neat. Yeah, it's uh, it's ridiculous, but I like it. Like <laughs> it's uh, stuff my boyfriend listens to, and I just got into it at some point. I just gave in. Uh, right on. <laughs> um, awesome. Outdoor or indoor fingerboarding? Uh, if give me a choice, I'll go outdoor every time. Um, what's your favorite obstacle? I have uh, an old uh, yellow. Well, it's, uh, it's just a steel flat bar that I welded welded together a few years ago, and I painted it yellow. Yeah. And I've that's been part of every session that I've had probably for five years like that comes out and you can tell when you look at it that it's been loved <laughs> it's just destroyed yeah like a great a great flat bar uh, I I always have like a, a black river flat bar on my desk like that's the only real obstacle that I have on my desk and it's always in arm's reach and yep. it's it's a bit too high for me at this point because it's an older obstacle and yeah oh, they yeah, got yeah. a bit lower but yeah it, a good flat bar is a good flat bar <laughs> oh for sure yeah. it is um do you prefer a uh, concrete wood or granite or marble i uh i i i'd like concrete but the best material to pop off of of course is is granite or marble yeah. um but if i if i were building a park today i'd be a concrete park yeah uh nolly switch regular or fakey i love fakey tricks i love fakey tricks i do like nolly tricks as well but i i have a lot of fun going backwards i i have a hard time with fakey like uh it's probably my my least comfortable stance. Huh. Um. Well, that's weird. Yeah, like Nolly is just so second nature. Like I yeah, uh, like the first trick I do with a new setup is a Nolly flip. Like the, the, oh yeah, that's your test. Yeah, it's it's also yeah. like my my first trick in most game of skates. Like. Nolly flip, tray flip, 360 pop shove. It's like one of those three. <laughs> oh, you'd be so proud of me. I've been landing really nice switch uh, 360 pop shove. Oh, shoves. nice. Yeah, like like ones, what, ones like you'd do. Yeah. I, I'm pretty happy nice. with that. Nice. <laughs> um, uh, favorite fingerboard video? Oh, ooh, this, yeah, I remember. Okay. There's lots. Lots of good stuff. Um, a lot of of Jay Linehan footage on YouTube. You go back and you look at some older Jay stuff. That's so good. Um, and I keep forgetting the, the name of the... Was it Get in the Streets? Hitting the Streets of Berlin. Hitting the Streets of Berlin. Yeah. TKY, yeah. full speed on every crazy little obstacle he can find, just shredding Germany, and, and I love and, it. And all, that's probably my favorite. That's probably that's probably my favorite video to watch, just to get stoked. And also, uh, Gene Zengers is in that video, who uh, who now has uh, also has a uh, has a, a five luck in his collection he's got he's got a he's got a bisco doesn't he um yes yes that, didn't we, yeah we made him yes work? yes uh it's a bi I'm bisco curious, with... i'm curious to think i i'm curious to hear what a, a fellow like i don't think about. uh like he <clears throat> he wanted it because of the graphic because he's yeah, he's exactly. a chemist and that's pretty much yeah. the only graphic he ever saw with some chemistry uh stuff on it and so I uh, I gave him one for his birthday, and that's so cool. Uh, and like the way I know him, he'll just put that on his wall and look at it, and yeah, beauty, beautiful. If you if you could get one uh, one fingerboard park, uh, which one would it be? I usually ask uh, which Black River park it would be, but if you have like a 
stoned or any other uh, park that you like, or a park, well, or a park uh, from uh, that Mike has in his collection. Which one would it be? Oh wow! Because oh, he does have so... a collection. <laughs> He's got a very comprehensive collection of spots. Yeah. It was when I when I got to go to to rendezvous. It was. It was insane because I was able to, I, in my in my head, like, it's cool. I'm going to see a bunch of people and talk to a bunch of people. But at the same time, what I'm really looking for are all these spots that I've been watching in his videos mm. for years. Because I got a trick list and I'm going to hit these spots <laughs> and get these tricks because I got one shot. I'm here. Yeah. Um, but honestly, to get a park set up, and and I, I I misnamed it. I'm glad we we got to do the podcast a second time because the first time I misnamed it as a G8. It's the G15 Black River Park. That if I if I could buy a park and just have a park show up. In mm -hmm. now, boop. Oh yeah, G15 absolutely. Um, Looks sick. Speaking of parks, do you prefer to have a park or just a flat ground with an obstacle? I I prefer uh, doing lines. I like, I don't just like doing one trick. I, I, I don't get me wrong. I love if I, if I just got a ledge to do one trick on mm -hmm. over and over again, you know, to hit one spot, that's fine. I'll, I'll shred that all day. But if I have a few feet to roll and hit a few different things, I'll uh, give me a park. I love a park setup. Yeah. For me, the, uh, uh, there's one, uh, one spot at the AC Berlin shop that got built by, uh, Julian Bono and, uh, Chris Henneman, who does hot sphere wheels. And yeah. That spot for me is the perfect sweet spot between a park and flat ground because the they oh, they yeah. set it up the way we like to ride when we are at Yuyan's or anyone else's. Just yeah. enough space to put two obstacles in where you can do a trick in a line, have enough space to set up in between, and have enough space yeah. to uh, run up and right. uh, roll away. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Yeah, I can spend so much time on that spot. <laughs> uh, heel flip or kick flip? Um, I love heel flips. Yeah, I'm not a heel flip person. <laughs> <laughs> I like them. Uh, who's your favorite fingerboarder and why is it TKY? <laughs> <laughs> oh, so many reasons. It's... Uh, it's uh, style, speed, uh, the tricks that he's got. Yeah, he, he does. So, he does things so that no one else does, and he does. I he does. Just like, I tried a few like of them. Martin Winkler, Martin Winkler used to do stuff yeah. that, that nobody else was doing too. Yeah, and at some point, everyone learned a Winkler spin, and yeah, absolutely, yeah. even 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 a guy living out in the bush here. <laughs> can uh can rip a give him enough transition he can rip a winkler spin yeah like what <laughs> one of the coolest moments uh since i came back to fingerboarding was uh because i knew uh because martin winkler was one of the guys i knew a bit better from back then like yeah because uh there's been like, like we've been to one event where basically we, we were the only two people from the from the core fingerboard scene that we like Everyone else was like local because oh, yeah. it, it was cool to have like an event that was all done from like a bunch of kids locally. And he and I were the yeah. only ones who like been around in the scene. And so we spent like yeah, a, the, the OGs yeah, on, the, on the scene. Yeah, and we yeah. spent like the whole day there because we, yeah, we were the only ones who, who like actually knew what they, they were doing and helped out all the kids. And it was a great event. And ever since then, uh, we hung around at uh, a couple of events back then and he uh, he got me to judge one of the fast fingers and he basically mentored us judges and I hung around with him and another uh, guy from way back when and we three yeah. would like spend the whole fast fingers weekend together and yeah uh, and when I came back, he was one of the people who I really wanted to meet again because I didn't know if he would remember me from 15 years ago at that point. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, so uh, and 
we uh, like the first few times I saw him, he he would he would remember me and uh, we would talk and everything was cool. But yeah, and one time we were uh, we were riding uh, the big mini together, and it was uh, oh, yeah. us two and uh, Ruben Young who works for Black River and also writes yeah. uh, for Black River, and we three yeah. were sashing the big mini for like. A good three hours or something like that. Oh. And uh, he, at some point he looked at me because uh, I, I was doing some transition tricks and he was look, looking at me and was like, yeah, I remember you being one of the ramp. Like he, he used the German expression, which uh, 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 the German expression is uh, Rampensau, which basically means ramp swine or... It, like it translates to, uh, it's usually used uh, for someone who likes to be in the spotlight, c but f with us, oh. with uh, with us, us two who like ramps, it's been yeah, it's the term. Uh, it's a term Ooh. we use for someone who likes transition, and I yeah. So he rec he recognized yeah, and, your style. yeah, because uh, he right. he knew who I was and knew me from back then, but he was like, oh yeah, I remember you ripping transition back then and. Yeah, yeah and just writing transition with Martin Winkler is in itself an amazing That's... thing. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Oh man. Um, That's how I felt the first time I ever got a sesh with Mike yeah. Schneider. I was like, oh, what a holy shit! Look at this guy. He's sick. Yeah. What a, what a cool dude Mike is. I love him. Yeah, I would love to meet him uh, one day in person. He is a he is he is a very very nice. Yeah. Nice yeah, when we when I did the interview with him, he was really cool. Yeah. Um, so, uh, what was your first fingerboard event you've been to? Uh, the first fingerboard event I went to was uh, one of the Joy Cult events in Ontario up here. That was, I can't remember what year, 2016, 2017 maybe. And uh, what's your favorite food? My favorite food? Yeah. Well, I uh, I don't get to eat a lot of my favorite foods because I got to live pretty cheap. But uh, I, I do like a good steak. I do like a good steak. Uh, do you like loose or tight or medium trucks? Um, I'm probably medium. I uh, I probably ride a little tighter than most, but it's still... Yeah, I think I'm the same. Still... Uh, I'm still able to turn and I, I do like you were talking about how in a line, sometimes you guys have to do shove it to yeah. get the tail back <laughs> to do the next trick. Um, I set my board up. Like I used to set my skateboard up with my back truck a little tighter, yeah. um, just for, for popping. So, um, uh, that's what works for me. And if I got to do a, a quick, uh, sure. quick shove it before the next <laughs> trick, I'll do it. <laughs> Usually if I, if my secret is if I'm starting a line, um, I'll either start it with the the nose. If I know the trick's going to involve the board going 180 yeah. on me and I'm going to land it and keep going and I want that tail, <laughs> then I'll start, I'll, I'll start with it already pre-shoved and I'll do something off the, uh, the nose tail. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what's your most hated trick in a game of skate? Oh, most hated trick in a game is a skate. That changes. I remember last time I, what I said and it, there's there's other ones that that get me. Um, switch front side flips get me every time. You want to get me a letter? Do a do a I, switch front side. I flip. love how the trick feels. I I uh, love doing. I, I them. love it too. If I could do it, uh, so many of my attempts just go flying across the room. <laughs> yeah, that, that's uh, that that can happen with that trick. Is it? It oh, really yeah. goes away from you. Yeah. Or if I land one, it just doesn't have any style to it. It's just... I don't know. Tough trick. Yeah. I'll have to learn. I mean, uh, I, I remember in my uh, welcome part uh, for Five Luck, I did have one uh, one switch frontside flip where I really debated on putting it in or not. And in the end, I kept it in. But it's one of those fake flip was that like did 
did you did you land and it was kind of were you kind of leaning back a bit? I I was landing uh, in a in a manual for like uh, yeah you you're thinking of the correct thing. It's like I landed on a like yeah. very short angled many pad and yeah 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 and uh, I I like the many in itself and everything, but the flip itself you could really see that yeah the 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 thing that happens with a lot of frontside flips like. The thing people criticized Chad Muska uh, back in the day for, uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> for his uh, hard flips or front set flips being flips. being something Big something shots. else, yeah, <laughs> something between, yeah, yeah. yeah, and that happened with uh, with that front set flip and. Yeah, so there there's a big chance to have them not look good by them not being a flip, yeah, but there is, yeah. if they flip just right, they feel amazing. Oh yeah. Um, what's your oh. favorite beverage? Coffee. The next. No. Yeah. The the, 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 <laughs> the next one I uh, I don't really need to ask, but cats or dogs? Oh yeah, yeah. That's uh, that's gonna be cats. I I love dogs. I don't want to get no hate from the dog lovers, <laughs> but for me and the way my brain works, cats. Yeah, the same. <laughs> Um, a 32, uh, 33 or 34 millimeter? Uh, 33 out of that bunch, but 33 and a half is what I mm. usually get. But 33 is, is agreeable yeah. with me. I'm sure I could get into 34. I just yeah. haven't. Yeah. I'm, I'm also more like if, if I were to choose between 33 and 34 flat, I would also go to, uh, for the 33 because yeah. It's weird how in fingerboarding we we can spot like half a millimeter when we just look at the deck. Like, oh, I know it, it's it's bizarre, yeah. but it and but you know it's everything's scaled down so far that those little increments yeah. really make it. Yeah, and you just know how it looks, and if it's something else than what you're accustomed to, it just looks wrong. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly it. Um. What's your favorite Instagram follow? The one that uh, the one that I like seeing yeah. stuff from. Yeah. Well, uh, definitely, you know, two more of my favorite fingerboarders, uh, hands and stuff like Jay yeah. and Han, and Dynamic Scott from Dynamic. Those two guys are shredders. Yeah, I. Uh, uh, Anytime they post footage, it's it's a must. The, uh, the flat face part uh, from Scott was, I think, quite underrated. I I knew a few people who who didn't like it because uh, I think I don't know what their issue was, but I uh, have a few of my Berlin friends who were like, "Yeah, I didn't like that part," and I loved it. I yeah, it was great. Yeah, that one and the uh, and the. Uh, uh, I I'm now a Ryan Bernier part. Yeah. Ryan Bernier. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. From loft. Those two parts were yeah. just insane. Great. Yeah. Yeah. So I like, I like when it, whenever clips come out from those dudes, you got to watch yeah. them. Um, I do, I do follow a couple of cat related <laughs> Instagrams that really make me feel good. I like that. I, Cats are cats. Cats are my favorite people. I'll be honest. I have uh, one of my uh, like. I'm really into like Dungeons and Dragons and gaming and stuff. And I have a uh, a channel that I watch where a guy is just amazing, and, and he has two cats that are always in the background of his videos. And uh, <laughs> a couple while ago, I found out that he has like a uh, like a second channel where it's just like four hour long videos of time lapses of his cats <laughs> no way awesome yeah and oh that's so yeah. good um and uh the last question uh what's your favorite overall company yeah um i don't know if i have one i i, I like i like lots of them but only if you're you know if if you're real and you're 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 focused on your on your work you're focused on your core you're focused on 
not just pumping stuff yeah. up. If you take your time and you make a good, you know, a good consistent performing deck truck wheel, doesn't matter. Yeah. Any any of these items, you know, then there's a good chance that uh, that we're gonna get get along really nice. Um, there's a oh Josh Chevenier, I think that's how you say his name. His uh, his Instagram handle is Josh Shoves. Mm -hmm. He is making some wonderful decks, and I I know I've I've got to meet him. He's been a he's been a friend of the the five here for for a long time. I got to meet him at Rendezvous. Got to hang out with him a bit. I, I, I can 100% say dude's legit and he's 100% real. Um, right now, he's he might be my favorite guy making that. Nice. Yeah. So. Shout out, Josh. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you again for, uh, for making this because I think this is a great way to end. And. Oh, for sure. And thanks. Th thanks for, for having me on and thanks for. for for doing yeah, th thank you for uh, make, making this possible, and yeah, thank you for letting me be part of the family of the five. <laughs> hey, stoked to uh, stoked to to ride with yeah. you, Yana. It's it's a pleasure. It, it's a it's a pleasure. Pleasure is all mine. <laughs> and <laughs> yeah, uh, sorry for everyone for this being one of my longer episodes, but yeah, I I think you. You now all know why why I back Bird and everything he does this much, <laughs> and yeah, I could could spend much longer talking to you, and yeah, so sorry for uh, this being a bit longer, but yeah, you can uh, check out new episodes every other week. I usually uh, upload on Sundays. You can find them on YouTube, Spotify, iTunes my website but yeah pretty much uh, pretty much everywhere and yeah you'll catch me in the next episode and yeah until until then and yeah thank you bird for doing this hey, my pleasure um thank you uh to everybody out there listening whether you've, you've supported the five or not whether it doesn't yeah. matter thank you thank and you yeah you'll catch me in the next episode bye